Okay, now what we're going to look at is we're going to uh, go through some of the procedures associated with watercolor washes. And the first thing that we need to understand about watercolor washes is that they are totally uh, involved with gravity. And how you work with gravity changes with different techniques. Here are my favorites. Um, I created a uh, piece of foam that was two inches by three and a half inches and the first two gravities, two and three and a half inches, are easy and constantly at my, at my fingertips. I recommend this to you because it covers uh, about 80 percent of the situations that you'll come into. There's a lot of watercolor painters painting in the uh, more vertical uh, alignments of their watercolor block and um, those require different techniques. What I'm talking about are these that are associated with two inches and three and a half inches of gravity. And in this respect, we have four of them. The even wash, graded wash, the graded wash with a fast gradation, and the force blends. We went over all of these, and actually several more, but let's begin with the even wash. Even wash requires uh, an, roughly an even spread of the pigment uh, over whatever area that you're working with. And um, all of these require the use of what is called a beaded wash. The bead here is where the uh, gravitational forces force the liquid brushwork into gathering at the bottom of the brushwork uh, into a pool. And in this, uh, and they call it a bead. Well, in this respect, we can move that bead down the page. And if you do it correctly, you will create what I call a flawless wash. And uh, here are the procedures for that that you can study and read, especially uh, the double stroking uh, that I use in my watercolor washes. If you can... Uh, get conversant with that and get some skill, it will help you to create perfect washes almost every time. This instruction is all designed around using a number 12 round brush rather than my one inch wash brush that I normally work with. But um, this is a good brush to work with and running a, a big area of even wash like this with a brush this size requires some uh, careful skill. So read this through and give it a try. But one of the things that we started with was after we did the even wash, I showed you how to work with a graded wash, which is the one on the left here. And you'll see that the gradation is rather slow, what I call a slow gradual gradation working from dark to light. The one on the far right shows a more rapid transition. The one in the middle is something radically different. That goes from an even wash and then you apply extreme gravity or maximum gravity. And you get the, you force the pigment to drop into the wet surface and uh, makes a lovely sky for um, a lot of paintings. Here, however, is uh, one of the things we worked on a great deal. And uh, the first one we did was this kissed edge blend with a thin bead uh, where you mix up a strong color and then you transition it by coming just underneath it and what I call kissing the edge of that bead uh, and getting it to soften downwards. Uh, then I showed you the fat bead 
where when you have a um, larger collection of color in the bead and liquid, that by overlapping your brushwork and double stroking, you get a long, gradual uh, development of the two colors combined, in which uh, the yellow went into a green and eventually comes back into full yellow. On the right, we have uh, the um, thin bead, and in that, the transition from one color to the other is relatively fast because we're using a thin bead. Then we went through and we tried them uh, in a number of different ways. This is a, a force blend with a thin bead and it has a half inch brush overlap. And the uh, one in the middle uh, also has uh, over half inch overlaps and they all have a thin bead and you know that because you can see that the transition from one color to the other is fairly quick. The one on the right, the transitions are slower because you have more of an overlap and you have a fat bead and so you get a soft longer blend and learning how to execute these when you need them is a prerequisite in watercolor. You got to know how to do these things so you have to practice them. The other thing we did was I showed you the rudiments of a gray study. Here in the first panel you see the all-over uh, application of a gray value. On the left side we made a soft edge on it. Then in the middle we started bringing the brushwork down and uh, went up the other side and then overlapped another wash over the top. But it's a very quick way to make a landscape in a study. Uh, then I showed you also how you can also, on um, arches, you can do the brushwork first and then overlay a, a big even wash over the whole thing. And uh, that's just another way of working. Produces a little bit uh, softer result. And you can come back in with a darker dark very easily on top of that. Here was one of the... Uh, what I call a peanut butter and jelly recipe, uh, a simple sandwich. This is a simple recipe, but actually it has a bunch of stuff in it. It has that two color gradation in the sky that we had practiced the technique for. Now we invested it into something and we also invested it into that far mountain and the far side of the valley. It has a three color transition. Can you see the three colors there? And in the foreground here, I showed you how to do merge brushwork, mostly with kissed edge blending of brushwork, one color into the other so that you retain the color and then you work on top of it. And um, here you can see, if you study this, you can see the different uh, executions that we did where we um, had lighter brushwork and we have darker brushwork. We have this base brushwork. And uh, then we got to it and we did this uh, Yellowstone. This is from my work on Yellowstone, this subject. And we did a gradation in the sky. Then we put in these two uh, mountains out there. And then uh, we taped it so that we could do all of this right side uh, merge brushwork. And um, then here you see what that background mountain looks like. I had covered it up in order to protect that line on the horizon there. But now we can see that uh, hill that's on the far side of the uh, meadow here and with its broken edge top. And um, what we're looking for is uh, this merging of brushwork uh, on the right side where we have uh, various colors that have distinction and uh, look beautiful. 
And when you see both sides of it, it begins to shape up and look like something. And uh, this has a lot of different techniques and it. it has broken strokes, cutting strokes, it's merged brushwork, it has uh, cutting edges, it has blends. And uh, then I showed you how to uh, develop your trees and being careful to control the values going back into space so that the trees in the back tend to get a little lighter and the darkest dark trees are up here in front. But uh, the trick to this is that, of course, that beautiful um, water where you have the soft reflections in the water and then I come in and I treat the edge of the water along the, that little shoreline that we left carefully. I go in and I drop color into that so that I leave the white on the shoreline that helps drive the viewer's eye back into space. The last big project we did was this uh, winter woods subject. Here's the basic drawing, and here was the first wash, this big graded wash that comes down, starts with uh, this uh, intense blue, and um, then it comes down, and I watered it out in the middle as I came down in order to lighten this foreground a bit. And I cut around the trees on all of the trees and put in the shadows and then I painted the first layer of the stream in this uh, dark middle value gray and once that was in then I started developing the open water in the stream uh, which was much darker and brought it all the way down to its finish at the front but Remember how to make these trees along the back. They're very simple. The trick, though, is to get them to sit in the snow. When you bring the brushwork down, it has to sit in the snow like this. And that's how you finish those trees off. They all have to be done in one go so that they're wet. All that wet brushwork merges into more singular shapes. Um, I dragged it on white, dry paper. I dragged these uh, broken strokes. Actually, this is my twisted torso stroke that makes this beautiful textured uh, brush stroke. And that was followed by the development of the foreground trees, which were the darkest darks in the painting. And um, you can see, though, that these trees all merged like into one connected shape. And I developed some uh, texture on the trunk of them. And while they were still wet, look at those tree limbs that I dragged out from the tree trunk out across the paper, uh, making uh, believable trunks and believable tree limbs. The other trick I showed you was how to use this broken stroke down the middle of the trunk of a tree. And once that dries, then we come down that tree with a singular wet brush filled with two colors of paint. One side had the burnt sienna and the other side had this hooker's green. And that was one brush stroke coming down from the top of each one of these and ending up in the bottom. While it was still wet, I brought in some darker umber and a little Payne's gray into the mix to make the darker bottoms on the trees, put a little more texture in and added uh, some warm uh, weeds in the snow, uh, as you see here. And that's where we ended that painting up. So this is a walkthrough of a bunch of techniques all in one go. And uh, I hope you try these over and over again so you develop your skill in these areas.